That should do it. She'll be all better soon. Musashi, I want to thank you for all your help. I'm glad she'll be okay. Me too. Oh, look! It worked! So now after completing that side quest, to actually get the reward for completing it, you have to go to the bread store. After that, all you have to do is talk to Bernini and you get Bernini's ribbon. Now it would have been simpler if they had just given you Bernini's ribbon after the side quest. I mean, it's not too much trouble, so it doesn't really matter. And I'm also going to go to Mugwort Shop, because we can finally temper move Shashi's Katana for the last time. Get it to max power. And the maximum amount of strength Musashi's katana can have is 25. If your, like, if your katana, I guess, is not at 25, you miss magic all the way in the game. You should probably go back and find them. Now Madonna's Emporium, she was one of the first mystic that you actually rescued, but she has one of the most expensive shops in the game, so that's really ironic and fucked up at the same time. I only visit her shop once in this entire playthrough, and only for one item. She does have some okay items, but I mean they're not really that great. The one item I got is to increase Misashi's focus by a certain amount. Also, for, like the other thing that I cut out was some grinding. And that grinding was to help m with Musashi's focus, so I could duplicate some abilities. Because that's the next thing that I'm going to be doing. The first ability that I go after is Celestial Strike. And I'm, ju I'm just going to be cutting to where the abilities are. Like, this ability is in Mana Temple, and you just get it from the enemy that you see here. So that's Celestial Strike, and after that, this is another enemy in Mana Temple, we're going to get Leaping Tiger from it. What I've noticed from this enemy that is, like, it has a very low chance of using the attack that allows you to get Leaping Tiger. It'll use every other attack but that one. So after getting Leaping Tiger, I'm going to go to pick it on Jungle. And I'm going to get two abilities and pick it on jungle. The first ability that I'm going to get is Shooting Star. I'm going to get it from the Shadow Beans that fucked Musashi up for countless playthroughs. It's not Shooting Star, it's not that great new ability. Um, after Shooting Star, the next ability that I'm going to get is an ability for a side quest, Juggle. To get Juggle and Leaping Tiger, you're going to need 150 Focus, which is what I got that item for, to increase Musashi's Focus. So after getting Juggle, I only have one ability left to get at the moment. There is one other ability in the game, but I'm going to get it later. The ability that I'm going to get 
is extreme. And you get it from the red ninjaroids that have been fucking the Sashi up for playthroughs as well. I mean, despite extreme and shooting star being godlike when the enemies use them, when you use them, they're not that good. And the thing that I'm going to do after getting all those abilities is the side quest that you use juggle for. If you do this side quest without juggle, there's not really a point because you won't get money for it. And even then, the money you get isn't really that much. So I guess it's just here for entertainment purposes. Now when the game allows you to act, all you have to do is use juggle, and that's pretty much the whole quest, like, that's the whole side quest right there, just use juggle. So if you don't have juggle, there's not really much of a point. And as you see, the mystics are very easily impressed by juggling. I personally think if Musashi had used the Sword of Void's power, that would have been more impressive. But whatever. This is just how this game goes. So I got $5,000 for completing that side quest. And the chest that I got from Wellspring Woods actually gave me like 16000 So if you had got the chest from Wellspring Woods, that's like three times the amount you'd get from that side quest. Getting juggle isn't really that easy because it requires 150 focus. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is complete the last arena fight. Now I tried to do this arena fight before, but like... The same thing that happened when I tried to complete that arena fight to get the twins headband, I just failed it horribly. Um, multiple times too. Now this is one of the hardest arena fights. Well, no, it is the hardest arena fight. And the only way I beat this arena fight in any playthrough is being a pretty high level and just spamming 360 and getting really lucky. I'm getting lucky in the sense that they are attacking Musashi during the recovery of 360. That's pretty much what you gotta hope for. All the 360s hit, um, no enemies attack you while you're doing 360. And if you get that to go through, you'll, you'll win pretty much. You can use Maelstrom as well, but the thing with Maelstrom is it knocks them like it knocks them far back and out so it takes them a long time to actually attack you after that and you don't have that much time because this is time and you have to kill a hundred of these enemies the enemy spawns aren't random they're going to be spawning certain types of ninjaroids and waves Now the reason I decided to use Maelstrom during that moment, the ninja rods with the drills, I have a very hard time fighting and that's going to take a lot of time as well, so I just decided to kill them that way.
I'm also pretty sure that during this fight you can't use any items, which is why you want to conserve your maelstroms and use them when you feel like they're necessary, and not just spam them. Now that's what I mean by luck. I'm using 360 and Misashi did not get attacked that whole time. Also, if that countdown, like the timer, is still counting down even after you kill the enemies and it hits zero, you'll actually fail. Like, there's a little bit of delay and lag for when that countdown timer should stop after you kill the last enemy. And the reward you get for actually completing that, like, the hardest arena fight in the game is not actually that good. Now I'll go to this guy only to see what the reward for completing the arena fight is. After you get the zoom lens, he allows you to um, he allows you to see a card, and that's like the only reward you really get. Now there's four cards that you can get when you're on a second playthrough of the game, and I'm gonna be showing those four cards off. Probably, well, no, it's not gonna be in their own video. It's gonna be in the stuff I forgot to show. I'm going to be showing those cards off and I'm also going to be showing off one other thing. Also for these Imagi cards, they're really fucking expensive. But the ones that you have to go for a second playthrough to get is Shadow Musashi, Gandrick Nebulized, Gandrick's Antheodon. And from here on, we're just going to complete the end of the game. I'm just going to go to Musashi's house one more time, and I'm going here to save. And this is the one save I'm yeah I'm pretty sure this is the one save I do the whole playthrough and despite the time it says it actually takes into account the time you did for the playthroughs before this one Now the next thing that I'm going to do is go to Pepper's Kitchen to get some HP and MP recovery items so that I can fight the final bosses of the game. The final part of the game is actually not that difficult. I still find Picadon Jungle Visit 1 and 2 to be the hardest parts of the game. So the 30,000 that Musashi had, that's all going to go to steak dinners, which cost a lot in this game too. Now I'm going to Bannon's office for the final time, so I can go to Rampart Isle. 
And you also get a little cutscene, just like, you get a cutscene when you go to Rampart Isle. And it's not that bad of a cutscene compared to the other cutscenes in this game. Now I never really mentioned it anywhere in the game, but apparently Musashi knows how to surf. Uh, 